Hi, in today's episode of Get Your Life Back, I want to talk about the role of feedback in helping you to get your life back. But before we start, I want to say thanks very much to all the people who have been putting comments on the website and on YouTube, particularly Jeff Buckland and Stevie Conley. Thanks for your kind words. Please keep up the good work. These guys are doing so well in terms of weight loss and getting those first elements of getting their life back. So thanks very much. Please keep feeding back. We'll keep changing uh, what we need to give you more of the information you need to, to keep making those changes. So thanks to Jeff. Thanks to Steve. Any of you others that want to send in some suggestions, please let me know. I'll gladly cover any of the subjects that I know about and that can help you to just get started or keep going on your journey to get your life back. So, talking of feedback is where I wanted to talk about today. And in particular, I wanted to get you thinking about the difference between feedback and criticism. How to deal with both and what role they play for us. So I want you to start off thinking about the difference, criticism and feedback. For me, it's really simple. Criticism, feedback is all about where the person is coming from when they give us it. Criticism, I find often, is about their agenda. Feedback normally is about our agenda. They're giving us feedback about something that they think we may want to know that may help us to get better. Criticism sometimes can be just they want to make themselves feel better. So that's kind of for me where the both things lie. So if that's a definition of them, I think about criticism and I think it has got a role, but I've got to be careful about it. I've got to filter it better. If I think about feedback, massive role. I want loads of feedback. So I want to give you a tool Number one, how to deal with both criticism and feedback. Criticism, deal with it internally. So you might hear the, the, the first thing, sorry, if I just take it back a bit, the first thing with either crit criticism or feedback is to listen. Don't jump in, don't defend, listen. Consider it. Deal with it internally, not externally. Often when we're getting criticised, we deal with it externally. So we go back at them with what they've done wrong or they've seen it wrong and they don't understand. With feedback, we're less likely to do that because it's not as critical to us. But the key to both of them is to listen. Make sure we're in listening mode because then we'll get absolutely the most out of them. Now put a full stop in that because what I want to think of next is what do we do with information we get from criticism and feedback? Criticism, sometimes we can take it, understand the meaning behind it, and if there is a bit of truth in it, do something about it. Take action and change whatever it is they're saying. Generally speaking, criticism is the other person's agenda. I kind of find it's, it's, it's their view and I'm not sure that it's about making me a better person or changing me. So I want to deal with feedback. Feedback. Someone gives us feedback. It's so important to listen to it and to act on it because they're doing it from a good place. So... Think about feedback in terms of changing your diet, in terms of changing your exercise. Dead easy ways of feedback. Number one, most non-threatening is measurement. When you start this program, make sure you take, number one, photographs before you start. Take them in your clothes, you know, your gym kit or whatever, but also, and I know it's for your eyes only in a bit, you know, it depends on how, you, uh, how your body image is, but uh, take some if you can in your underwear. Front, side, and back. I know for some people they love taking photographs, I'm quite a fan of the selfie myself, um, but for others it can be a bit of a, oh I don't want to see myself, but I've got to tell you, you've got to do it because you've got to see yourself, number one, and number two, it's fantastic when you see a bit of progress just 12 weeks down the line after that first program ends, you look at the difference in 12 weeks and you think, oh my god I can't believe it. So measurement from photographs, essential. Wait. In these first programs, until we get to about week 36, and you'll find more about the programs on www.breakthroughweek.com under programs. In these, in these programs, we kind of do need scales. Scales are a funny thing because as we start to change shape, start to exercise, I might weigh a bit more, but my muscle mass has gone up and my fat has gone down. But to be fair, that didn't really happen to me until after about Ooh, I was going to say 12 months, but it may have been a bit earlier. It may have been maybe about eight to nine months that started to get that change. But certainly a year, especially as it kicked into my exercise of choice is running. I know I've mentioned Stevie Conley, his exercise is cycling. 
Um, Jeff, I'm still waiting to hear what your exercise is, so let me know when you've when you've got it. I think Jeff might be walking at the moment. He did say that in his uh, feedback. So um, think about the role that scales play. Scales are great because they'll measure that loss as we go down. In those these first weeks and months of a program, we're looking to see that weight loss. So definitely weigh yourself. If you can get ones that measure your body fat, so much the better do that. If you can't, you've got your height, you've got your weight. There's a fantastic NHS BMI calculator, body mass index calculator. So that's a really good one. I personally use that as well as looking at my scales. So use your scales. You know the rules with scales once a week. Don't be tempted to go because as we change, uh, as we're going through the day, I've taken on a reasonable amount of water today because I'm running uh, tonight. Um, so that can make an effect. And I know that after a run, uh, if I do like a 32 kilometre or 20 mile run, um, I'll probably weigh somewhere about three to four pounds lighter immediately after because I've, I've measured all this so I know how much water to take and all things like that. So depending on when we measure ourselves, our weight will vary. So the key to it is choose a day. For me, it was always Saturday. Saturday morning, get on the scales, get up first thing for any breakfast, for eventing, get myself measured and capture it in a log. If you're old school, write it down in a book. If you're new school, stick it in a spreadsheet. It's so much fun to, to watch that measurement. So that's your second measurement. First is pictures, second is scales. Third, good old tape measure. Measure your chest, measure your tummy, measure your hips. Make sure you uh, you know capture them somewhere as well, spreadsheet or old school, but just make sure you've measured them so that you've got a record of them. So there's the easiest more forms of feedback is simple photographic ones, scales ones, and measurements. Now think about those, they're non-threatening because all we're doing is we're, we're in control of that measurement. Now when it comes to the next bit about feedback, about how we're exercising, or when I think of exercise, I think of Alex at the gym will tell me that I've maybe not got my shoulders straight when I'm doing a, a bench press, um, I'm maybe got my shoulders in like that, maybe my squats, I'm not putting my backside out far enough. Um, he'll give me great feedback about how to change my exercise. When I'm running uh, with me uh, buddy Dave, Dave might say, would you normally run at this pace? And you measure yourself against others. Um, measurement for me in exercises, taking part in um, time trials, stuff like that. You'll find different measurements. And to be fair, in the early days, I would suggest, especially if you're cutting back in the calories, but we can talk about this in any of the programs, um, what to look at is um, make sure you measure. Example, I've talked about this before, it's the jaw by up bone fit bit, whatever you want. I really like this. I just found this easiest to wear. I, never forget. I don't mind the way it looks as well. Couldn't get a black one, so I had to get this colour because I quite like the black. It blended in more. But anyway, got it. What that measures for me is three things. It'll measure my sleep. It'll measure my paces, how much I moved, and any exercise I'm doing. It'll measure my food. So fantastic feedback for me, that. Um, also, I've had some feedback from, you know, in, in terms of these videos, any feedback you give me is fantastic because then I can make sure that they're as good as they can possibly be. I just want to be the best me that I can be. So that's that, That's where feedback comes in. It is so powerful and so helpful. So think about the different areas we've looked at feedback. Number one is take your base measurements and measure them. I'd say once a week, what I found is I was going through the rapid weight loss at the beginning, two inches um, every two weeks. Sorry, wait till I get it right. I can check my spreadsheet because I've got it on the spreadsheet. It was an inch uh, every two weeks that I was dropping. It was phenomenal. Clothes that I don't know if you've fallen for this, but I certainly did. I had three wardrobes, one that was too skinny, one that was kind of just right. I rarely had one that was too big. Mostly it was probably one that was probably just a bit below and one that was miles out I'd kept. Um, I haven't got that anymore. I've got one wardrobe, everything fits, and that's the way it's staying. So I could feel myself getting into these clothes and it was like, a, you know, as my wife and daughter would say to me, it's like a bloody fashion show every week. Actually, it was every two weeks because that's when the difference was being made. So make sure you're doing the measurements. Do them, your weekly measurement, but also your daily measurement with something like this or on your your phone, your iPhone and your Android. There'll be a, an app. The only reason I didn't use the, uh, the pedometer was it used my battery too much. That's why I went for something like this. So feedback, absolutely crucial to your success. Me, again, I quite like photographs, so I took selfies. Some of you might have seen that video, it was a bit too long, but it was like almost every selfie I'd taken over a year. But what was interesting 
at least taking maybe a weekly selfie, you can see your face start to go or if you extend it, you can see your body shape changing. That's so powerful. It really keeps you motivated. We talked about in an earlier um, episode that was talking about influencers. One of the key influences for me was seeing the progress. Once the fire catches and you, you get going, it's awesome. So me measure every step of the way you're doing it. Be aware of it because what you're doing is you're bringing it all to your, your conscious focus, which means you're aware of it. If you're aware of it, you tend not to do those poor behaviours because you're aware of them, you're focusing on them. So again, thanks ever so much for listening. I really appreciate your uh, your, your patience and, and your support in this and your engagement. Um, remember, anything you want to feed back to me, just contact me at uh, john at breakthroughweight.com. Let me know what your issues are. We'll see if we can deal with them. Uh, Jeff and Stevie are okay with me mentioning it because I know they've, uh, they've said that. But if you prefer not to be giving a shout out, just say that. If you don't mind a shout out, say that as well and I'll make sure that we mention you. So thanks again for watching and remember, measure, measure, measure.